what is protein to target how do you calculate the exact amount of protein that you should take every day how do you prevent protein deficiencies keep watching to find out welcome to the 14th episode of my youtube channel the healthy drive last time i told you that india is a protein deficient nation this is so because india is also a protein unaware nation the lack of awareness of the protein is very low a study was done known as the protein paradox study in 2020 which surveyed more than 2000 women in india across 16 cities uh, this study basically found out three p's protein paucity protein psych and protein pinch so why is there a paradox this is because despite of the fact that the indian mothers recognize that protein is important they are not able to identify the correct source of high protein foods and hence include very little of it in the diet so this is a very interesting study i have left the link below you can go through the study yourself now this is what this study found but in at the ground level reality may be little more nuanced there are social factors cultural factors uh, beliefs uh, an example is that even if you can afford protein the women of the household will include it in the diet but keep it aside for the male members to eat first and the the female members and the girl childs they get the last preference this is something very peculiar to the culture of our country in many household it still exists and that may also affect the protein intake so if you compare uh, protein consumption of india with other countries around the globe india is perhaps the lowest this is a very peculiar thing in india that both vegetarians and non vegetarians uh suffer from protein deficiency and uh, the so called non vegetarians also do not eat adequate protein so how much protein should be take what should be the targeted protein intake in a day the national institute of nutrition hyderabad recommends that the minimum amount of protein or the rda recommended dietary allowance should be 0.8 grams per kg per day now that is the bare minimum which is required to prevent protein deficiencies most people in our country eat way below that or even half of that they eat 0.4 to 0.5 grams per kg of body weight which makes them protein deficient now i would recommend that uh, to for any active person whether it's a growing child or whether it is an active adult and even more so when you are growing older the body needs much more protein so your recommended or your actual intake should be 1 or 1.1 grams per kg of body weight per day and the body weight with the ideal body weight not the body weight which you are at but the ideal body weight which you should be at your age and height so if you want to keep the protein to target at 1.1 grams per kg per day then for a male it should be around 70 grams and for a female it should be 60 grams now is this a high protein recommendation if you compare it to the rda it is high protein but this is what is necessary the rda mind you once again i am telling is just the bare minimum and is not adequate for the for any active person especially for growing children and active adults and also for elderly people where the protein requirement goes up and if you are doing resistance training if you are doing exercises which many of you are doing so in that case the protein requirement would be even higher uh, i would recommend than 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kg of body weight per day you should aim to eat at least 20 grams of protein with every meal research has shown that uh, eating 15 to 25 grams of protein with every meal stimulates protein synthesis and stimulates muscle building the next question is what foods should you eat to meet your protein to target now eating and meeting protein to target need not be a complicated affair all you need to be aware is the high protein content in each of the foods which you can come across or which you can purchase and eating accordingly and being mindful that when you are feeling full because protein as you know is very satiating and will keep you satiated and you will not feel hungry for a very long period of time so let's have a look at the different kind of foods and their protein content if you have a look at this chart which uh, shows the proteins at a glance 
the source is lifted on the left and the serving size and amount is listed on the on the right side so from dairy you get milk and paneer and curd and yogurt uh, one cup of which will give you 8 grams uh, one half cup of paneer will give you 6 to 8 grams and um, uh, yogurt one cup will give you around 6 to 8 grams pulses as you know is a rich source of protein and you get uh, 6 to 8 grams from half cup and if you have dal tadka you will get 6 to 8 grams from one cup and besan will give you 10 grams in one cup uh, sattu which many people have uh, in the morning uh, will give you 12 to 15 grams in three tablespoon uh, if you take three tablespoonfuls uh, sprouts is a very popular um, breakfast item and um, uh, is a rich source of protein but one cup will give you around 6 to 8 grams only soy protein is a very good source of protein and whether it is soya flour or tofu one cup will give you as much as 20 gram soy is actually considered a complete protein because all the essential amino acids are present in soy protein uh, nuts are also rich sources of protein if you take around 20 nuts as a snack you will get around 6 grams of protein green leafy vegetables um, as you saw in the protein paradox study is perceived to be a high source of protein but it is not protein rich you need 100 grams of spinach uh, which will give you only 2.9 grams of protein so this chart is very important you can follow this chart to calculate your protein to target in a day and this chart uh, the sources are dairy and vegetables so for those of you who always ask me that i am a vegetarian and how do i meet my protein requirements this will be very very useful so i'll keep this going for some more time as i tell you a little more about how to meet your protein requirements being a vegetarian or eating a plant-based diet Although many plants contain all the nine essential amino acids, in most cases one or more of these amino acids are present only in small amounts. Additionally, the protein in most plants is not digested and absorbed as easily as the protein in animal foods. For this reason, most plants are referred to as incomplete proteins. So although the proteins, the amino acids are there, it is not bioavailable as much as the animal proteins. Certain plants like hemp seed, uh, quinoa and nutritional yeast have been described by some as complete proteins that includes tofu also from soy protein however each of these plants is slightly low in one or more of the essential amino acids it is more accurate to say that these foods provide a nearly complete protein uh, soya as i said is considered a complete protein because it provides all the nine essential amino acids in amounts comparable to milk proteins casein and whey your body also digests and absorbs soy protein quite efficiently grains actually tend to be lower in lysine lysine is considered to be a critical amino acid which is essential of course now let's come to the first class protein the reference protein is an egg which you all know a large size egg will give you as much as 7 grams of protein whereas a medium size egg will give you around 6 grams of protein so if your body requirement is 70 grams then actually you can eat 10 eggs and get away with it but hardly anyone does that we have to mix it with other first class proteins or you can mix it with plant proteins also and about uh, meat fish and chicken you have to remember about 100 grams give you 20 grams of protein so uh, just remember a, a pack of cards a pack of cards is size of 100 grams of fish uh, chicken or meat can you believe it i bought this just to show it to you 100 grams of uh, fish chicken and meat will give you 20 grams of protein the other source of protein which is available in the market is as a supplement which is the whey protein now whey protein is derived from milk and it is a very rich source of protein and can give you complete absorption but i will not recommend this whey protein as a substitute for the naturally occurring protein i always say that eat real food but at the end of the day if you see that your protein needs are deficient you may use this supplement to make up for whatever protein is deficient actually the food quality determines the food quantity if you, as you can see in this picture uh, if you eat 
junk food which is there on the left side you will need to eat more you will crave to eat more food whereas if you eat real food and good quality protein food a little of it will satisfy so the take home message from this episode is that first of all become protein aware prioritize the protein in your diet buy the best possible protein that you can afford and try to meet your protein target every day it may be expensive in the short run but the cost of falling sick of lifestyle diseases and medicines in the long run is much more expensive this is the best possible investment that you can make on your health it is like a health insurance policy so i wish you good health and good amount of protein awareness and good amount of eating protein don't forget to subscribe to this channel and share this information with your friends and i'll catch up with you next time